Welcome to the first dungeon of A Link Between Worlds, the Eastern Palace, which is also the first dungeon of A Link to the Past. I will notice, design-wise, there's some similarities. This looks like the first room of the Eastern Palace, but it plays out a lot differently. This is not the same dungeon. Part of me kind of wishes as soon as you walked in and hit that statue that your sword broke. <laughs> Welcome to the Link Between Chink! Oh shit. Solving the puzzles in this game, even when you only get things like rupees, is very satisfying. I found this actually to be a very easy temple, obviously for for simplicity, you just want to get used to it. It's the next uh, dungeon that really got me hyped for this game, I think. Yeah. But I mean, if you ever played any of the older Legend of Zeldas, this has pretty much the exact same format design. I know how to do this. And I actually managed it. I thought for sure I wouldn't. I like how the old school games start you with that. Wait a minute, I knew it! Yes! <laughs> if it was in 3D, you could tell. <laughs> Unfortunately, my recorder does not manage that functionality. I wonder if there is one that can do that. I feel like there's only one or two actual 3DS capture devices. But I don't even see how it's possible, like you couldn't, I don't, because it's something your eye does with the way the screen's set, so I don't even know how it would record properly with that. Technology's confusing. I think that to an extent it feels like the dungeons themselves also have a sort of non-linear progression. At least to an extent, not completely. I do think that the temples here do feel very deliberate. Like, it doesn't feel like there's any wasted space. Yeah, the dungeon design is very tight. I did not hear the timer. Yep. <laughs> Alright, time puzzles. Alright. I remember those, those uh, boulder things doing a lot of damage. Probably like a heart. Which at this point of the game are like super valuable. Damn it, couldn't manage it. <laughs> this is how mosh pits work actually. <laughs> this is what it was like at concerts in the 70s. God, I have concerts now. Oh dear, damn it. I don't, I don't know if it's a Texas thing, but even like, Texans would mosh pit on a Kenny G concert. <laughs> they do it for everything. I would love to see that. <laughs> shove. <laughs> well, does it make you want to shove anyway? <laughs> it makes me want to punch. God damn it. There's a switch right under this staircase. See, I'm always one of those guys, like, I, I would go to, like, a punk concert and everyone would be, like, scatting. <laughs> and... Like, there'd be, like, a big scat pit where everyone's just dancing. And if you guys are thinking of it in a negative context, that's what it's actually called. You mean skanking? Sc scatting is a completely different thing. <laughs> yeah, scatting is something you do with your mouth. Yeah, there's a... That's also a thing that does on the opposite side of your mouth, but that's not here or there. <laughs> so everyone's <laughs> shitting in the middle of this concert. <laughs> no, um, skanking, that's what I meant. So, like, I'd go to a concert, like a punk concert, everyone's skanking in the middle of it. And I would go out, just because I'm a giant dude, and I'd be start skanking, and I'd bump into one guy, send him flying on accident. And then everyone else would avoid me for the rest of the <laughs> procedure. So I'll just be dancing by myself. You are dancing with your uh, health. <laughs> then I just scattered in sadness. <laughs> <laughs> Try to guess which one. <laughs> I don't need to. I was there and I was very offended. <laughs> Yeah, my jazz improv scares everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! It's all, sadly, blah 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 doo blah. <laughs> God damn it! I will never be slick. Oh, I like that it doesn't use stamina until you've actually released the arrow. I also like that this isn't timed because that would be very annoying. Oh yeah. Oh, they wouldn't do that in the first temple.
Also, this uh, this is kind of always found that'd be the relaxing temple because you didn't need a specific item to do it. Yeah. So you just got to play with all your normal stuff. There's actually a second dungeon that's like that. So it's just a matter of going through it, finding keys. You don't even necessarily need to find a key to open a door and then progress from there. You can gather up as many as you can find if you take the right route. The skeletons in this version are actually kind of cute. Because they're so round. Ah, blah, blah. It's like you're fighting a baby. <laughs> a big baby. I need to have it to do with daddy. <laughs> wow! There's a couple tricks with those guys. You either hit them with an arrow or just back them into a corner and keep swinging. They may jump, but they still have to come back down. See, like, this one's very straightforward. It didn't take us too long to get the boss key. Yep. Part of me was hoping that the big key was kind of would be used the same way as it was in A Link to the Past, where you all you used it both for the boss, but also to get the dungeon item. But then I remember you get the dungeon items all together if you have the money. Which the the only thing that makes it kind of disappointing is that getting the dungeon items in the other games was kind of a cool moment. Like you'd fight a mini boss and get it, and you'd feel the success for getting this new item that lets you travel through the dungeon a little bit better. But the fact that you just rent it immediately kind of, I think, lessens the overall impact of getting it. I think it makes up for it, though, in that you can use all of the dungeon items in any dungeon, and that allows you to improvise some interesting ways to clear the dungeon. Especially if you're really sick of something and just want to blow it up with a bomb. As long as you have enough magic in your loins. <laughs> there will be plenty of puzzles where it's just kill everything and then a chest with rupees will appear. Or in this case, guts. Yeah, that's, that's a strange one. We use monster guts to make potions. I think I do maybe once to show it off and then I never actually need to. Why would people put... <laughs> that's so wrong. What are we going to do with this appendix? Put it into a chest. Someone might use it. <laughs> but they need to work for it first. <laughs> See, Yuga? That's what wriggling looks like. That's worming. So you know how I mentioned this guy sucks? What was he going to use that rod on? What sand is there here? <laughs> In his pocket. He was going to throw pocket sand at him. <laughs> The cutscenes in this game are pretty good. <laughs> Throwing off the 3D here. Last time, I'm a boy named Taco Bob. I have a boy named Sue. <laughs> How do you do? You're gonna <laughs> die. <laughs> yeah. You guys in hard. I think you like this one just because you get to start the very beginning of the game with the bow. <laughs> I like that you could start the fight by shooting him in the face. So this isn't hard. Just stay on the opposite side of him and shoot him in the face. So this is the final villain, everybody. <laughs> yeah. This is the last time we see him, obviously. It'd be a very short game. You can basically hit him at any time as long as he's not in the wall. I find it kind of—it is slightly hilarious that he has these amazing powers with his paintings, but you just bop him with a little tiny bow and arrow, a baby bow and arrow at that, and that's enough to be like, "No, my weakness!" You notice he actually summoned the knights from *The Link to the Past*. You spoil everything like an apple. You're going to spoil my food. Like an apple, you stupid worm. Painting of a worm. Oh, shit. He didn't give me a frame. I feel cheated. I was frowned. <laughs> What's because I don't have a pretty border? <laughs> he didn't give himself a border, too, so he admitted he's not pretty either. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> you slipped through a crack. I feel alone. He broke every mother's back. 
<laughs> you savage bitch. <laughs> Hug me now. <laughs> Even this form, he has a stoic face. Uh-oh. Uh, it feels weird with the eyes moving. Yep. Well, especially if he looks at the camera right now. Uh... Special gimmick power. Paint fist. Bam, ba, da, ba. Oh. How about that? That smelly old bracelet actually helped us. Ba -na -na -na. Buffering. <laughs> I thought I'd do it as a question mark. Ba -na -na -na. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, I guess you can merge into walls now. <laughs> you get it. And Yuga left us a heart container. How nice of him. I am now stronger. I ate his heart. So yep, you wander around, and there are some interesting animations. If you can get it right, Link's eyes will just sort of wander around and look at it. It does use up stamina, so if you stick on the wall for a long time, or use it in conjunction with your weapons, you can run out of stamina really fast. But throughout the game, there are energy potions, which instantly refill it. The game's got you covered. This part made me feel like, with things like Portal, for example, you had to think of the world with portals. This game, you had to think of the world with walls. Yeah. And look, wall rupees. So let me let me get this straight. This dude went through and like, you know what? I'm going to also exile these one rupees. <laughs> I'm going to exile my savings. <laughs> Thanks, Geico. In the wall, there are wall rupees. I'm basically just picking up chalk. Already 100 rupees. Oh, yeah. Of course, there is a lot to spend it on in this game. This may be an easy dungeon, but it is very satisfying. And as they say, more money, more problems. That has nothing to do with what we're doing. But... Yeah. Money seems to be pretty good in this game. <laughs> That's a saying. That's what I'm pointing out. Oh, boy. Oh, no. So all of us getting back down is learning how to use the wall merge ability. And doing some interesting puzzles. Doing whack. Oh, God. I like the sad trumpet in this theme. See, as soon as that stuff started happening, I'm like, oh, this is a cool power. <laughs> yeah, I like that the music actually, the bass just disappears. Because like you, the music also has to go thin. Or flat, if you will. And just like you, a kid hero would not have any bass. <laughs> and now we're back at the entrance. But there's still some more stuff. You could see there was a crack in the wall. Whoa. What are you doing? <laughs> Nearly dying. You're gonna kill yourself. Goddamn. Goddamn. It's okay. Things cost hundreds of rupees in this game. That's pretty amazing. So that was Eastern Palace. Only took 13 minutes. Still more rewarding than that first dungeon in Skyward Sword. You could have come here yourself. <laughs> well, it took him this long. Well, he was a loser, so you should have known. I know that didn't make you feel any better. But... <laughs> of course he's going after the princess. <laughs> At least he has an excuse in that the princess is a descendant of the wise men from A Link to the Past. Or the backstory of A Link to the Past, because remember, we're just going through all the motions. That motherfucker's playing a MIDI over there! Magic Missile did nothing! <laughs> I take this conversation so seriously. See, this is what it feels like. We're doing the same thing! <laughs> It'd be easier if you didn't actively point it out. Exactly. It's literally him going, Oh no, not again! <laughs> As it zoomed in his face with the trumpet. <laughs> it 
Still, the music is fantastic, though. Is that how you spell quandary? I'm going to test that, actually. What a quandary! It might be. I might be making an ass of myself, but I'm pretty sure... I don't remember having another A in it. Yep, that's correct. Oh, okay. I've been misspelling it. I have, I have had no excuses to use it, so... <laughs> Maybe that explains it. It's like me misspelling Tallulah. It is not Tallulah. <laughs> I reject that. I reject your English and insert my own. <laughs> I'm Japanese. I also like this idea. Thanks for helping me with my mission. Now fix the world, asshole. <laughs> Why? I'm a blacksmith. <laughs> Just... How about that? So in A Link to the Past, we actually got that pendant from Eastern Palace. In this case, Zelda just gave it to us. We were really just at the palace to learn how to go into a wall. And that's about it. But now we sort of know the goal of this first act of the game. Yeah, most of the game I think this pretty much covers. Oh, but there's the paintings. Oh shit. <laughs> yep, and now they're coming to life. I thought that was a pretty neat little trick they did. Also just shows kind of how cool his power is. Yeah, I should. Of course, that also means that this guy, this creepy dude was walking around painting the city with these things and no one went to stop him. Considering it was like, what they ever say, a cavalcade? <laughs> Whatever they said, it was just the, the apocalypse of paintings. <laughs> there were being all cool on my walls. See, sometimes this is what's bothered me so much about the old school Nintendo games. They do have a way, like, not leaving much choice to you just to say no. They're just like, oh no, we're gonna tell you to go help this person, but now you have to save the world! I don't feel like it. Oh. <laughs> Are you the new monarch? <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> but a bunny stole it. I let him do it. I'm such a fool. Bunnies steal everything. I hate you, Rabbit, so much. Really, seriously, rabbits go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so next time we're going to be doing some exploration. Now that we've beaten the first dungeon, Hyrule opens up to us considerably, and it will only continue to do so as the game goes on. That'll be part four. Part five will be the next dungeon, House of Gales, followed by Climbing Death Mountain, followed by the dungeon there, Tower of Hera. And then we will see where the story progresses from there. <laughs> All right. <laughs>